Maryland's Hair and Beauty. And since my hair is done, I kind of complete it with makeover. Then uh, my daughter has very good skills. She's my beauty advisor and she also gives me makeovers occasionally. And uh, we're going to do it on camera. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you bet Bethany if you watched the haul video. And uh, yeah, so. Get it started. Yeah. So I personally don't like to put on my makeup unless I have a base of lotion or SPF. Um, SPF is so important to your skin, especially when you start to age or even when you're 24, you start to notice that your skin gets a little bit more wrinklier. But I'm just gonna, don't worry, I washed my hands. I want to. And why do they smell? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, if anything, they smell like dove cucumber. Um, I want to put your hair back with something because I don't want your hair to get ruined. Yeah, you worked so hard on it. But that's the next thing I'm going to gift you. Um, little hair pins so you can pin back your hair every time. Well, I'm watering some for Maui. That's good. I'm going to do pin curls So for my crazy girls. <laughs> Because we don't have any of your makeup here, I'm going to use my makeup. Mm -hmm. And then the next what we're so going to... So just tell them what you're using. Yeah, so the next one that we're going to do is a hyaluronic acid. It's nice. It says on the go. Hyaluronic acid is so great for your skin. Especially okay, cause I got, just got some. We live in like such a dry area and we have tons of snow in the winter so I just got my serum. The best. It's got dead sea salt mm -hmm. and um collagen. The best um like makeup pack is skin prep. So we'll be using my brand new foundation. So you're going to try it. Um, I mean, this is my go-to. It's True Match. L'Oreal. It also has hyaluronic acid in it. Um, it's medium to light coverage, depending on how you apply it. So today I'm going to be applying with my e.l.f. brush. I use it as foundation, but it could be used for cheeks as well. So I'm just going to pump it. Um, you're my mom, so we'll just go on... It's new. We'll do unhygienic. This one's like relatively light because we have, I've lost my suntan. So I like to apply with a brush or a beauty blender, depending. So I like to start with the middle and then work my way out. And then I like to finish with a little dab of uh, my fingers. Little goes a long way. So I try to do kind of like a no makeup makeup look. So we're kind of just playing around with makeup today. We don't really have a goal. We don't really have a look that we're trying to achieve. Just having fun with it. So this foundation is really good um, if you have dry skin. That's why it's important to, well, just even applying lotion if you have oily skin as well. If your skin is oily, that's your... Skin. Believe it or not, my skin's been balancing out over so the years. That's normal. Yeah. So you'd say you have a combination? It used to. But it's nowhere near what it used to be. It used to get oily in the T-zone three times a day. And very dry on the cheeks. Mm -hmm. Where a foundation would crack. Yeah. I like to 
always bring it just a little bit down so we make sure that our neck is best friends with our face so it's not too too crazy. <laughs> so I'll tell you what I definitely grabbed you but this might even be too light for my skin so this might become yours we'll see that wet and wild was actually pretty good mm -hmm. wet and wild is a good but it would be better for a highlighter mm -hmm. oh wet and wild it's so hard to find drugstore brands that have a wide shade range so L'Oreal's one of my favorites. They do have some pretty bad products, but as well as many other, but they have some good stuff. So this is the L'Oreal um, inf Inflammable Full Wear. It's a dupe for the Tarte um, Shape Tape. Shape Tape? Shape. So I'm going to go in with the concealer brush. And we don't want that much. We're just going to start a little bit. I'm just going to go a little into the under eye and I'm just going to blend it out with my fingers because you'll see a difference between both eyes. Just that little bit of concealer. I lift her up. I know sometimes you see videos of people doing their, their makeup and they got these really big triangles and yeah it will look good for a photo but in real life you just want in that in real life you'll see it yeah so i'm not going i'm personally not a fan of setting powder so i'm just going to sp neither. spray you with my dewy. it shows off the fuzzy but mm -hmm. not my skin yeah there's also some facial shavers that you can use those little tiny ones and they're the best i know but i couldn't keep up with it mhm mm uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't bought any more, so close your eyes. So, e.l.f. Coconut Setting Spray. All of these products are, like, relatively um, cheap that I'm going to pull out here. So, the next step. So, we're going to use something a little bit warmer. We're going to stay away from that gray tone for you. And we're going to use... I'm going to butcher that word. Clinique? What is Clinique. that? Clinique. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's like French. Ciate. Yeah. So, it's more of a bronze cinnamon. We don't want to do anything that's like gray on you, because that's just going to wash, wash you right out. We're going to tap as much as we can off, because you really don't need that much. So we're just gonna, cause you have quite an already dark undertone, so we don't need that much. I got very high cheekbones. Mm -hmm. They say to like suck in your uh, cheeks and then do it, but that's I don't have to. No. <laughs> It's an old technique. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go right in with a blush. This is the only blush I own. And this is an Essence. I love Essence. I spent like $3 on this bad boy. And I don't have a name for it, sorry. But still, it's like... Kind of close to that bronzer look. I personally can't use two pinky tones. So we're going to go all across your face. So we're going to give that sun kiss look. Because you don't want to look washed out. I'm just going to blend it right in with that. Uh, I'm pale and ready. Mm -hmm. Blushy. So we're just going to bring a little bit of that pop back up. I like to blend it in with the bronzer just so it looks a little bit more natural and not like 
for a video. So yeah, straight across the nose all the way through. So we're gonna go into my style of eyebrows are so different than yours. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not gonna make them look too crazy, but we're gonna try something different. So I'm gonna go in with a brow wand, e.l.f. This one's also brown, but the NYX fluff and full is a blonde. So it's a cute little wand and it has extra fibers in there. It's a little trick to use blonde on pale skin mm -hmm. when you got dark hair. Oh yeah, because otherwise you look like, uh, what's her name? Adam's family. Yeah. Snow White. Or Joan Crawford. Yeah. I'm just going to brush all the little hairs that you have because it's going to really thicken it out a bit. Yeah, in the camera you can't really see, but you have so much color back into your face mm -hmm. just by using that little bit of bronzer and uh, blush. That was cute, right? I blacked on your wall more times. You're like, yeah, you do. He's just getting back into video games. Yeah. He normally plays on together, but I have a lot of beauty and projects I gotta get done. <clears throat> so that's just the starting coat. We're going to go in now with the eyebrow pencil. I prefer this one because it has a little bit of a, like, how do you do that? Like, teardrop shape to it. So I can be a little bit more precise. The eyebrows, I find, are so crucial. But everybody has their own style. I'm trying to, like, at least a little different than what you're used to. I like to do change of things. I used to do her eyebrows and the Angry Bird eyebrows were a trend. And after I was done, I'd be like, these are hideous. <clears throat> it's a good reminder to remember that eyebrows cater to face shape. You don't have to try to mimic or change your complete shape. Everybody's eyebrows are unique. I'm just so excited to share the lipstick that we're going to put on you. I just like to do like a rough kind of scratch on what the eyebrows are going to be and then start adding your, your little bit of uh, filling. Definitely not your average eyebrows that you're used to. Yeah, you definitely look like your other daughter. Yeah, make sure you don't have that box because you, you don't like the check mark eyebrows. All right. So we're going to go so subtle. With the highlighter, this is from Boxy Charm. 
that I, I got. Uh, it's a Glow Duo Highlighters. So we're still going to stay with that warm color. So we're going to do a little bit more of a, a peachy. And I'm just going to grab a tiny brush. I don't have an exact highlighting. Some of us are stuck in the color palettes of the 80s. Like that color swatch thing. Mm -hmm. And um, here it's expanded. Color Me Beautiful is kind of a thing of the past. So I always kept with the cool colors, thinking it complimented me. But it turned into a one trick pony. All right, so that's done. And like, you really don't need that much highlighter because the more that you're applying like dewy colors, you're gonna get your skin's natural highlighter. So I'm gonna hit this again with the dewy spray. That's fun here. I'm not even gonna attempt to put uh, when it comes to mascara. <laughs> um, so I have a couple palettes. We're gonna get you to pick. I have a problematic person's palette that I've never used, I've purchased and I've never used. So this is an OG. This is the first palette that I've ever done makeup with. A lot of people have. It's the Naked 3 palette by Urban Decay. It's a good starting palette because it has such a neutral blend and there's some grays. I've been using neutrals so much. Neutrals? Okay. The last three days. So this one is Morphe. I don't remember the name. I like that. Yeah. That, 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 that. Okay, so we'll show, this is most likely what it's going to be, but we'll show you one more palette. I lied, I have two more palettes. Give them Lala. This one's another. <laughs> I like that stepmom. Mm -hmm. That one's a great. The wife, boss lady, say yes. The ring, I do, Prince of Be Princess of Bel-Air. Mm -hmm. I'll go with that one. This is another one. This is ColourPop. This is a brand that's cheap. ColourPop's the one I keep hearing about. Yeah, it's a it's a great band band brand. Um, it's one of my favorites. I personally don't put that much eyeshadow on, and uh, we're just gonna leave that that one because that one's a whole mess. So you wanted give them Lala by Beauty. Okay, the Morphe. So. We're actually going to use one of these colors. It's always important when you're doing eyeshadow that you have to put a concealer, a powder down because you want to get rid of all those veins that are in the eyelid that's going to um, interfere with the colors that you're using. While you're doing this, give advice for the old ladies like me. Okay. Well, powder is important, especially when you notice that you're starting to get hoods? Yeah, and the crow's foot. So you definitely want to powder that so it's not creasing. Which it does with cheap foundation. Yes. Well, most foundations will. Um, so it's always good to put a powder on there. So we're going to start with the closest color that you can find to the eyelid. So we're not going to do anything too dramatic because um, it's not like we're going to a casino tonight or anything mm -hmm. like that but in general it's just it's fun to have enhance your natural face complement the colors to your own skin's color palette and my hair all right so we're gonna do kind of a purpley mauve type color so i'm gonna dip into a transition color so we're gonna get a little bit of that on the brush pat it off as much as you can because you can always build up on makeup it's so hard to take off what you've already put on so we're just gonna go above the crease that's another trick mm -hmm. so you got hooded lids yes so I'm just gonna get my pimple out of there <laughs> so um, Brushes are really important to make sure that you have the best possible 
eyeshadow application and it's all about blending. I like to describe it a lot as painting is that you're not the color that you want is not the color you're going to start out with. You want to blend into it. You want to transition into it. So even though we're doing a purple, we're really contouring her lid with that brown. And it's fun because even just that, you could leave if you wanted to. It's nice and subtle. I like it. Nothing too crazy. <clears throat> so we're going to go back in with a darker. So this is what I mean by transitioning it. So we're going to go in with another darker brown. So that's what we started with. We started with a color here like this. We jumped to here. Now we're going in with a bit darker. Remember to tap off all the excess that you can. And this is where you'll really notice. Yeah, that's because I, I always get fallout. Yeah. So this is where, you're, where you will really notice that color starting to pop through. And it's a nice blend. I don't know if you guys watched Edward Scissorhands, but you know, blending is the blend, secret. Blend, blend. Don't worry if you get a little too crazy and you go over. You can always cover that up with some concealer. Some people actually prefer to do the eyeshadow first and then do the foundation after because of the fallout. Just because that's what I've been doing. Yeah. And just because the pan has a lot of fallout doesn't necessarily mean that it's a terrible color. It could mean that there's tons of pigment in there. Um, also, it gives me time for my primer to set. Yes. All right. So even if you just look at that, that would be a perfect, like, smoky eye, natural, like, one and done. That's it. But that's not what we'll go on for here. So this is the cool part. If you have hooded eyes, you really don't need that much concealer. Like the tiniest little, little dot on a brush. Like, that's it. So the idea is not to put too much. So I'm going to get you to close your eye and just tap that eyeshadow close to the lash line as you can. And I'm going to get you to open up your eyes and look up. There we go. Close. So that just gave a guide right there. So that's going to show where I'm going to apply all the concealer that I need. So I'm actually just going to add a little bit more. So this is now what you do if you have hooded eyes. So this is going to give you the look that you have wider eyes than you do. So you're going to bring it right up and you're going to apply that concealer all over the lid. You can stop halfway. That's where you can apply another color. And what we're going to do, we're just going to do a little halfway because that's where we're going to really make that purple pop. So we're just going to focus on this eye and then I'll jump to the, the next eye. And you'll do a nice little clip and be like, boom, it's done. All right. So when you're packing on the next color, you want to make sure that you're putting that powder in for that next transition. So if you remember the first color that we did, this one, we still want to make sure that we're setting that concealer. We're going to just add that powder on here. We don't want it to look so crazy and harsh. All right, so we're going to go back in with that dark color and we're going to blend as much as we can those two transitions because we don't want it to look too, too harsh. This is not 2016. We're growing some beauty eyes. Blending is the secret. So don't worry, like I said, if you're going past 
this way, we can always clean that up. All right, now when you're packing down the next color into the lid like that, you're gonna wanna use a flat brush. Nothing too crazy. Just a flat brush so we can really push in that pigment. So we're going to go in with, which one? The one. This one? Okay. So we're going to go in with that. I'm going to tap it a little. All right. And this is where the magic's going to happen. Because now we've got a clear canvas for the color. It's going to really pop out. I'm just going to tap it, tap it and blend it down, tap it and blend it out. First time I've ever used this color. I notice the people who struggle to put on the makeup the most is pretty guys. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to like learn your eye. So because those two are back together, we really want to blend them. So we're going to grab that dark color again. We're just going to just scope around like this. Kind of blend it out. Now that's done, we're going to try to find another dark color that we really want to put into that crease. So I'm just going to go beside, grab a dark one. We don't need much at all just a little a tiny bit we're gonna now really darken that crease we want that contour as we want it just bring it around bring it around some brushes like this can be really good as well just to really get it in there this is gonna make the eye look a lot bigger. So if you open up, you no longer have a hooded eye. <laughs> you see that, folks? So that's a little bit of a, a little bit of an eye trick. And so now when her eyes open, you can really see that pigment up there. You don't just see it when her eyes close. So like I said, we can always clean up the side. I'm just going to go up like a little cat eye. You don't have to. It's not mandatory. I'm just going to take that little bit of concealer that's still kind of left on the brush there and just kind of clean up the area like this. You, have, you can also do this like with the brows. Like once you're done your eyebrows, you can Clean up with concealer. Um, just blend it out with the finger. <clears throat> you can stop here. Or okay. Oh, <laughs> thank you, everybody. Just wait. Oh, I mean, you could stop here, or you could put on an eyeliner. Oh, we can stop here. You're gonna put your lips, lips on. Yeah, we'll put okay. the lips on. Yeah, I guess we could okay, stop here. Sorry, guys. <laughs> oh. Sorry, guys. Let's. Yeah. One more step. Well, we'll put on the lips and then we'll show everybody the finished project pro process. Okay. So we're going to go in. We're going to contour her lips a little bit. So we're going to use Balani. They have a um, good option for lip liners. I'm 
allergic to beeswax. Me too. So I can't use a lot of lip liners. So I'm just going to outline her lips just to give that definition when we have that. You really want to go for non-matte. If you have dry skin, the older that you're getting, stay away from that. I'll tell you that. So what it's going to do is it's going to make you look older. So we're going to line that. This is one thing that I'm excited to show you because when you're stuck in old makeup trends and things don't change, one of my personal favorite lipsticks. This was very big in the 90s. It was one of the <clears throat> um, most sold out product. It's from L'Oreal and it's called Toasted Almond 843. Such a beautiful color. Beautiful, natural, and it's so smooth and creamy. This is perfect if you are already seeing a lot of texture. It smells good. Yeah. If you're already seeing a lot of texture on your lips, you don't want a matte. You want something nice and creamy that's really going to hydrate those lips, and L'Oreal brings it. Alright, so we're going to do everything mm -hmm. else off camera and we'll come right back. Okay, well, I'd like to thank Bethany. Thank you, Bethany. Yeah, no problem. Look at this. I look beautiful. My hair and my makeup, it's all put together. And I feel beautiful. Now remember everyone, everyone has beauty.